Welcome to Clemson, South Carolina for the finale of this top 25 series between 12th ranked Duke, who could get the series win with a victory today, and the 21st ranked Clemson Tigers, who won yesterday and would love to get the series split. Both of these two teams toward the top of the ACC standings. In fact, Duke in that top spot with just two conference losses so far, trying to stay there as they finish things out in Clemson today. I'm Jen Hildreth on the call with former Texas A&M All-American pitcher Amanda Scarborough. Amanda, we saw each of these teams come into this series with two of the longest winning streaks in the country. Well, those are no more. They took care of that for each other. What would a win today mean for each team? You know, for Clemson, they're still such a young team. They're only a year and a half into their program history, and they had their highest ranked win in program history yesterday against Duke. And for Duke, they want to stay at the top. They have a really tough schedule coming up where they'll play Florida State, they'll play Virginia Tech, and also UNC. So every win matters in ACC conference play. The Blue Devils were able to get a series off to a good start with a doubleheader sweep on Friday. They won the first two games. Peyton St. George getting the win in game one. Shelby Walters the win in game two as they ended that 17 game win streak by the Tigers. But Clemson would return the favor yesterday, snapping Duke's 20 game streak and they brought their offense early. Yeah, Valerie Cagle got the start in the first inning. She had a two run bomb and Mackenzie Clark backed her up with two more RBIs. All of that happened in the first and second innings. Uh, Clemson was able to play really good defense too. Gilstrap, the shortstop, made some phenomenal plays and Cagle would get the complete game win. She looked really strong in the circle. Things that we're watching Watching for today in this final game is Duke with runners in scoring position. They're only two for 26. And then Clemson on defense. They were sharp yesterday with Gilstrap at shortstop. They didn't make any errors in that win. But in the first two games when they lost, five errors for Clemson. Can they be sharp today? Some great points there as we get a look at the freshman lefty, Millie Thompson. She got the start in game two. She gets the ball to start things off for the Tigers today. And Millie Thompson, you are going to see her compete in the circle. Of course, she comes from the left-hand side. She's got a great changeup. Jamison Cable going after the first pitch, and she is retired after that pitch. She brings a lot of energy in the circle, Jen, to this Clemson team. They feed off of her, too. This is the starting lineup she will face for the Duke Blue Devils. Cable in that leadoff spot again, which has typically been held by Deja Davis, now batting second and at the plate now. She'll be followed by Caroline Jacobson. Davis just one hit in the series, although she came into this series against Clemson and actually still maintains the highest batting average on the team. She's at 390. Yeah, she's been quiet. Their usual leadoff hitter, although yesterday she was bumped down to fifth in the lineup. And, you know, she looked better. She ended up taking a walk in the middle of the game, a really good at bat, and then ended up getting that first hit of the series after that walk. Looking to get her going, though. Certainly an important player, preseason all ACC selection, a captain for this Duke Blue Devil team. And you mentioned how young in years the Clemson program is. Well, the Duke Blue Devils aren't too far behind. This is just their fourth year in existence. Two-two <laughs> pitch and a big breath from Thompson. Swing and a miss. She sits down, Davis. Dropped it down all the way to 51 miles an hour with it for the strikeout. And the defense behind Thompson, you pointed it out, Amanda, that this Clemson team played error-free yesterday. That was so key in their win. Bigham, Gilstrap on that left-hand side of the infield, certainly two of their leaders. They had their two errors apiece in game one. Caroline Jacobson now the batter, junior outfielder. Two for nine in the series. Had a home run in game one in the sixth inning to help the Blue Devils to that two nothing win.
Clemson head coach John Rittman told us that Thompson's just a competitor out there. It doesn't take you long to see that, I don't think, watching her go to work. Yeah, and she brings that energy, that competitiveness into that great changeup that she has to where she completely sells it, gets hitters to buy into thinking that she's going to throw 65 miles an hour and then just pulls it back to 51. You can tell, too, when a pitcher has confidence in that pitch when she's throwing it in backwards count, 2-0 count, 2-1 count, just really relying on that changeup to be her strength and to keep these hitters off balance in this game. 3-1 pitch. Jacobson swinging. It gets off the glove and through. And with two outs, Jacobson will pull up at second. It's a pitch a little bit harder that's more up in the zone, and she just finds a hole down the line. And, in fact, Bigham had a chance to be able to backhand that on the hop, but this ends up getting all the way down into left field, and Jacobson moves herself into scoring position, a play that most likely won't go down as an error, I don't think, but a play that she needs to make. Officially ruled a double for Jacobson. That brings up Christina Foreman. And look how already they have a chance with runners in scoring position. They, they've had a ton of opportunities. And especially after losing in yesterday's game, you want to be able to come out and be the team that scores first if you're Duke. Foreman looking to lay down the bunt. But the Clemson defense up to the task. So another base runner for Duke, but zero on the scoreboard. Clemson Tigers coming up. The Clemson Tigers started fast yesterday in their win in this series against the Duke Blue Devils. They had four runs in the first two innings, and the top of the order was so good, especially Mackenzie Clark leading the way there. She's followed up by Cami Pereira, Valerie Cagle, who's playing right field today, although you may wind up seeing her in the circle at some point. And Marissa Gambarda, the big batter, who still hasn't really gotten going in this series. And they'll face Shelby Walters, a junior right-hander, who leads the ACC in ERA. She does, and did give up any earned runs in game two when she got the start. Had the complete game win against his Clemson team and looked really sharp, only had those three hits. She did give up a run, but it was unearned. You're going to see her look different, too, than Peyton St. George, who's the other, quote-unquote, ace of this Duke team. Peyton St. George likes to be more up in the zone. And Walters likes to be more down with their drop. Clark coming in red hot. She was a perfect three for three yesterday in the win. Had two doubles, but struggled when she faced Walters in game two. Was 0 for 3 with a strikeout first time facing Shelby. There's not been a lot of offense in this series. Clemson coming into this game in the series, only hitting 164 as a team, and then Duke 231. And I think it just goes to show how strong the pitching staffs are on both of these teams. Really good arms. And to back you up there, Amanda, these two teams, one and two in the Atlantic Coast Conference in terms of ERA for their pitching staffs, Clemson is first followed closely by Duke. Three one to Clark. Swung on and she got it through a hole. Clark's hot hitting continues and she's aboard with a single. There's only two players on the Clemson team that have more than one hit in this series, and Mackenzie Clark is one of them. They try to work her on the inner half. She gets a good chunk of her barrel to it and is able to drive it to the outfield to, again, be a spark for this Clemson offense. I hope someone is buying Mackenzie some pie since 
Most Clemson fans know this, but I love this story. Pie is her nickname simply because she does love pie. I mean, she's four for four in her last four at-bats. Give her some love. Cami Pereira now up to bat for the Tigers. And the runner is going. The throw got there. Looked like in time. Duke thought they had it, but Clark, who came into this game a perfect 14 for 14 in stolen base attempts, looks to have made it 15. Yeah, Clemson likes to run. This is going to be their 52nd stolen base. The throw was a little bit high, and Foreman, the second baseman, is going to come over to cover second base. If that throw had been a little bit lower, she for sure would have been out. I don't even know. Maybe she got her foot in there anyway. Was she safe? That was close. <laughs> Certainly really a close. threat. And you can see her jumping around out there now in that second base and in scoring position so right off the bat each team with a runner in scoring position in the first Duke could not bring them around can the Tigers try to get an early lead O2 misses outside Pereira Sr. started her career at Furman and transferred into this Clemson program. It was a first-team All-Southern Conference. She played with Furman. With the Cami chant going in the dugout, makes contact, but it will be an out as Clark advances. Taking a look at the Duke defense, Tapia Davis, Foreman, and Crabtree on the infield. Goddard, Cable, Jacobson around the outfield behind Walters, and Jackson, Cameron Jackson, will be the designated player. And here is Valerie Cagle. Just one hit in this series, but it was that two run shot yesterday. And my apologies. I wanted to give Clark an extra base there, but she did stay at second on that last play. So well played by the Duke defense to keep her honest. It, it really was, and that's what I was thinking, Jen. As soon as I saw a ground ball to the right side, I thought that Clark was going to advance. I was surprised to see her stay at second base just to show how hard that ball was hit to Crabtree at first. Valerie Cagle, such a threat at the plate. Preseason All-ACC, preseason All-American, and Walters doesn't want anything to do with that, with the base open. Yeah, no and surprised even though, by this? You know, Cagle has struck out four times, I believe, in this series. Uh, I'm not surprised, even though they did throw that first pitch strike. I think they saw her take that big hack and were like, all right, um, let's maybe go ahead and put her at first base. Because, look, she hit the two-run home run in the first inning of yesterday's game, and she's the best hitter on their team. You don't want the best hitter on the opposite team to be able to be the one to beat you. Of course, you get through Kegel. Up comes Gumbarda, who's one of the top RBI producers in the conference. Gambarda swinging early, pops it up, and nice running catch made there by Deja Davis. It's a big out. And that's why, if you're Duke, you take the chance to go ahead and put Cagle at first base and go up against Gambarda. And look, she has the RBI numbers. She has the RBI numbers to prove it. It was actually Tapia who made the run over there to make that catch, so my apologies. Came over from third to make the grab. And with two outs now, Aliyah Logaleo, freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. Two out, two on for Logaleo. She's been the other hot hitter for Clemson, too. I mentioned there's two hitters that have more than one hit in this series. It's Mackenzie Clark, who is standing at second base because of her single, and also Logaleo, who has three hits this weekend.
Walters ready with the 2-1. You mentioned Logaleo hitting pretty well for Clemson in this series, Amanda, in the first two games, which Duke won that doubleheader on Friday. The Tigers had six hits as a team. She had three of them. So she's really been seeing the ball well this whole series. Reached out at the end of her bat on that ball. It's foul. Yesterday was the only day that Aaliyah did not have a hit, but she still reached base twice and scored a run. She was 0 for 1 with a walk, was also hit by a pitch. Q2, fouled off. Just a tough out. Yeah, she clearly has been too, just finding a way to continually get on base. You mentioned it, even when she didn't find a way to get a hit, she still found a way to get on base. And it was because of it, that's like this, where she was a tough out. She fouled off a lot of pitches. Ball goes right to third, and there have been a couple of changes in that defensive outfield. That is actually Cameron Jackson for Duke, who made the play at third, still scoreless after one. We move to the second inning now, Clemson, South Carolina. Take a look at what the Duke Blue Devils have done in this series so far. And the number certainly that stands out, Amanda, one you pointed out, that two for 26 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, with 22 left on base, and they've been able to get runners on. And this is just the story of softball, Jen. It doesn't matter if you're in an ACC series or in the postseason. You have to be able to hit with runners in scoring position, and it's the difference between wins and losses. Millie Thompson ready to face Kelly Torres, freshman catcher for the Blue Devils. I must know, Amanda. Did you make noise when you pitched ever? Did you ever have to let out a little grunt every now and then? Because Thompson, she does, she's not afraid. <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, but <laughs> I've seen quite a few pitchers this year. And in fact, both of them have been lefties from the ACC. Estelle Check from North Carolina State also has this same type of swag that Millie Thompson pitches with too. And the grunt to go with it. 2-1 pitch. Torres pops it. Catch a ball into the glove, and it is held on to. Well done by Matamore at first for out number one. Good job, Matamore just finding this ball, kind of a basket catch right close to her body and almost pops out right there, and that would have been tragic because we're talking about this Clemson defense is trying to stay strong. Giselle Tapia now the batter and we want to make sure we correct ourselves. She is starting at shortstop today. That is a change for the Blue Devils. A late change that was made. Deja Davis moving to the designated player position. So Tapia sliding over to short. One outside. And Tapia coming off a game where she went two for three yesterday, had a triple for the series, hitting 333. She's hit for single, a double, and a triple thus far. I think that's what stands out to me about this Duke offense is 
that they don't just rely on, on one hitter to come through every time. And even talking to Coach Young coming into this series, that's what she was pleased about their offense is that one through nine, they've had different hitters step up in different moments all throughout their order. Tapia swinging on the 3-1 pitch. Now that brings a count full. Empire's just checking on the count, making sure that it's right. Thompson readies herself. 3-2 pitch misses, and Tapia aboard with the walk. What a close pitch to take a full count. And this is great eye by Tapia. Look at her look the entire way in. She sees the speed, She the spin. She recognizes that it's going to continue to move away from her. Full count, takes that pitch, and she trusts her eyes to do it. Now one of the captains for this Duke Blue Devil team, Rachel Crabtree. First baseman who started every game of her career. She's a little lower in the lineup today. Hit second yesterday and has a hit in each of the last two games. You know, we mentioned a couple of their captains, Jen, with Rachel Crabtree and Deja Davis, but Rain Wilson, unfortunately, going down to injury but a couple of weeks ago now, tore her ACL. So a player that has just been such an important figure in Duke's roster and leadership, inspiring now as she takes on a different role in their dugout. This ball popped up, could be catchable. A couple Tigers on the run, Gilstrap who was the defensive star yesterday and had a double play. Trying to get two there. She'll have to be satisfied with the one, but it was a nice one. She's literally been all over the left side of the field toward the middle of the field, now down the left field line. Sticks with it. She knows that the fence is going to be right there. Even when she hits the wall, she's able to hold on to it and throw to second base. Great base running by Tapia to be able to go first to second base and tag on that pop fly. A little conversation with Millie Thompson, freshman out of Bedford, Virginia. Helped her high school there, Liberty High School, win a state championship, first state championship in any female sport back in 2019. She was perfect, went 9-0 and in the playoffs that year. And Cameron Jackson takes the first pitch for a strike. Ball in the dirt. Runner is moving. Was it enough time? It was. Just that little bobble. That was all Tapia needed. The most of your way over to third. And Duke base runners have done such a good job with this whenever they've gotten on base is that they've seen a change up down in the dirt and they're instantly being able to take an extra 60 feet. I've seen them do this four times, I believe, in this series. So one, two, the count for Jackson. Hitting in the eight spot for Duke. Playing third base today and taking a strike that's gonna sit her down and end the inning. Amanda Thompson coming through. Duke continues to struggle with runners in scoring position. Thompson makes a nasty pitch and she gets a call for the looking K.
Back in Clemson, South Carolina, we've got two of the top teams in the ACC and two ranked teams here as you look at this group, which is all in the top 25 at the moment for the ACC. Yeah, we got some new programs in Duke and Clemson with some fresh blood and new coaches and Virginia Tech with Pete DeMoor, who's a newer coach in this league as well, and is making some noise in the ACC. It's been impressive what they've been able to do and, and continue to build in this conference with their level of play and talent. Really diversifying things, if you will. Florida State has been pretty dominant winning the last six ACC championships. They've been the team to beat, and now you've got some of these new programs popping up and saying that they're going to be a force to be contended with as well. I think that the, the pitching has really stepped up to me with the way that Keely Rochard is throwing the ball for Virginia Tech. I mean, it just seems like game after game she continues to put up double-digit strikeout numbers for them. She's really one of the best pitchers in the country. Walters changes speeds, doesn't get the call like Thompson did on the outside corner to the lefty to end the last half inning. That was close. I would have definitely wanted that one if I was Walters. Inside that time on Gil Strap. Yeah, you could see on that previous pitch, Amanda Torres behind the plate. Being like Kept that ball <laughs> frame, looked at the umpire. You sure about that call? <laughs> you sure you don't want to change your mind here, Blue? <laughs> Gilstrap got a bat on that ball, and it is fair. She will hold up at first with a leadoff single. Clemson's leadoffs have done a good job in this their series. 10 for 22 at the leadoff spot, just crushing that ball right past the left-handed Crabtree. Good job of Jacobson getting that in quickly and not letting them get extra bases. Grace Matamore, the batter for the Clemson Tigers. And you could tell Duke very aware of the threat of Gilstrap at first, and here's why. She's amongst the best in the country in terms of stolen bases in her career. Yeah, you're in good company with Aaliyah Andrews, Alyssa Brown. But 110 stolen bases in your career uh, that's, is just truly something I can't ever, I uh, didn't even come close to. <laughs> Matamore and a diving catch is made out in right. Jacobson with a golden glove on that play. Yeah, two good plays by her back to back. She's going to stick with this pot fly. It's moving away from her in foul territory. Goes. I would say feet first, but kind of knee first to be able to get her glove underneath that one and secure an important out. Jojo Hyatt, freshman catcher, now up for the Clemson Tigers. She was at Clemson last year, so of course last year did not count against any of these softball players' eligibility. Started every game behind the plate in that shortened season for the Tigers in 2020. It had to have been such a letdown, right? You wait for the inaugural season, and they were off to such a energetic and noteworthy start. The crowds that they were getting and the wins that they were putting up, even had a win against Georgia. Ball hit to short. Blue Devils looking for two, and they get it. A double play to end the inning by the Duke Blue Devil defense. It's a pitcher's best friend. One pitch, you get two outs. There's like nothing better. Tapia to Foreman to Crabtree. Double play to end the inning. We move to the top of the third in Clemson, South Carolina. We were talking about the inaugural season for Clemson softball that got underway last year and some of the good things that they were doing, Amanda, before the season got shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, they came out with a really big bang. And, I mean, 
you don't really have high expectations for a new program, right? Like, and that's nothing against anything about Clemson or their coach or their players. It's just they're a new program. And the way that they played last year really turned a lot of heads. Now even jumping into the top 25 rankings, the way that they've been able to do this so quickly has been incredibly impressive. Sarah Goddard got a good piece of the ball on the first swing of her at bat, and she'll get a leadoff double. Not bad from your nine-hole hitter to start off the inning for Duke. At Goddard hitting early in the count, hitting from the nine-hole, is going to shoot this ball the opposite way, finds a hole, and as soon as that gets in the hole, you know that you're going to have extra base hitters, or extra, base, extra bases for the hitter. Double for Goddard to start off this inning. That'll flip the lineup over to Jamison Cable at the top. She was two for three against Thompson in game two on Friday of this series. One of the more consistent hitters for this Duke team all season. All right, Amanda, you're going to have to use the technical terms. That pitch just looked nasty coming in for a strike from Thompson. Yeah, I I mean, I don't think we need anything more technical than nasty because that you works? know exactly okay. that it, yeah, you know exactly that it was a really <laughs> good pitch with spin and movement. <laughs> He's going to have that traditional curveball too. Oftentimes when you see a left-handed pitcher, Curveballs usually going to be one of their best pitches. Going to work side to side, still be thrown hard, 63, 64 miles an hour. Cable hitting 364 in the series coming into this game. She ground out to second in her first at bat. Pops this ball up, and it'll be catchable for Pereira for out number one. Got some lacrosse coming your way on Thursday, and it might be April Fool's, but this is no joke because this is one of the best rivalries in lacrosse. They're both undefeated. Number one, North Carolina. Number two, Duke at Koskinen Stadium. Our coverage on ACC Network starts at 7 Eastern, and of course, you can always find that on the ESPN app as well. Deja Davis now up at the plate in the designated player spot of the lineup today for Duke. Usual starting shortstop. Davis will try to leg this one out. Dives in head first. She's safe. The runner's headed to home. And she is safe as well. How about some heads up base running there by Goddard? Not to mention the bravery of Davis. Speed absolutely kills in this game, and Deja Davis has it. She's going to be able to get her hand to the bag before the tag is put on. An awesome base running by Goddard to go on this and get underneath the tag. As soon as she saw Matamore was going to be on the ground, kind of rolling around in that play, she decided to go. They decided to send her, and Duke is able to score first. Seemed to be a little bit of hesitation there by the Clemson fielders in terms of how they were going to try to get Davis out at first, and that bit of hesitation was all she needed with her speed to get in there. And then I love that replay. You could really see what Goddard did to elude the tag and get the first run of the game. Yeah, that, that is exactly what Duke needed to happen is just to kind of play into their hands, just a little bit of luck with runners in scoring position. Goddard goes around 
this tag and what a slide. Hyatt was a little bit late just getting her glove down. Everything just seemed to move a little too slow for Clemson on that play and Goddard was able to take advantage of it. And it all started with Deja Davis who was just one for nine with four strikeouts in this series coming into today. She added her fifth strikeout in her first at bat today, but now a real spark plug that's gotten Duke on the board. Caroline Jacobson, the batter for Duke. Jacobson doubling in her first at bat, back in the first. This time, she has a runner in scoring position. Davis on second, one out. And props to the nine hole of Sarah Goddard, who's a freshman for this Duke team, just being the one that gets the rally going from the nine hole. Two zero pitch, in for strike number one. Thompson started game two of this series, pitched the first five innings of that game, gave up six hits, two runs, one of those earned before making way for Valerie Cagle, took the loss in game two. Jacobson. Had a home run in the first game of the series. This one's not going to get deep enough, but Davis tags and goes, and the Tigers got her. The defense making amends with a great play to end the inning. Yeah, but it's Duke that's going to score first in this game. Sarah Goddard with a dive home evades the tag, and Duke scores one. Duke strikes first as we go to the bottom of the third. But a nice double play to end the inning for Clemson. Can Kegel just do it all or what? Playing <laughs> right field, one hops it to her third baseman to be able to put on the tag. And look at the energy out of Clemson with that double play that ended the inning. Nice play. Casey Bigham swinging early. And she will be retired for out number one. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern right here on ACC Network, we'll have exclusive coverage of the Miami Pro Day from Coral Gables. A huddle's Jordan Cornette host along with Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and former Canes head coach Mark Richt. Be sure to check that out 1 Eastern on Monday right here on ACCN. Top of the order now, and Mackenzie Pye Clark, who's earning her dessert with what she has done in this series thus far, singled to lead off the game and went three for three yesterday with a couple of doubles. I think if you're a softball player, that's really why you want to perform well. I mean, of course, for your team, but then you also just want a reason to have dessert. And whether it's pie or ice cream or cookies, you know, whatever. <laughs> I hope that broadcasters get that same excuse for me sitting here in my in my chair for a couple of hours. <laughs> Maybe I get to earn it that way too. At least I'll tell myself Definitely. that. <laughs> Definitely earning it. <laughs> Mackenzie, a freshman out of Mayaca City, Florida. One, two, the count for Walters. <laughs> Let's see what Mackenzie maybe thinks of it, nonetheless. Game face back on. <laughs> you know, we talked about this yesterday, Jen, but when you're in a new program and and they haven't achieved anything up to that point because there's no history, you get to be a part of the, a lot of the first, whether it's the first ranked team or the first no-hitter like Shelby Walters threw at Duke. 
Coach Young had I read on D1Softball.com that Shelby had started the season as their number three but came in with a, a chip on her shoulder. Clark hits this to second. It's bobbled by Foreman, and that will allow Mackenzie Clark to get on base. It's going to be an error on Christina Foreman. Just like she let that ball eat her up a little bit, sat back, waited on it. Clark down in that runner's stance, ready to add to that stolen base total. She's already got one today, 15 for 15 on the season. Cami Pereira at the plate. But you think about Jen White, Duke has had such good success, and I always go back to their pitching staff because they don't just have one pitcher that they rely on. They have a true staff. And with the way that Shelby Walters has been throwing the ball this year as Coach Young had mentioned came in as you know the number three but kind of came in with that chip on her shoulder like I'm going to show you and she's been throwing the ball really well at the tops of the ACC and ERA and when you have these four game series like the ACC is having this year and all four of the games count where it versus the Pac-12 they're playing four game series but one of those games don't count toward conference standings every pitch every game matters and you play the same team a lot you have to give them a few different looks and Walters has just been so good this year. Pereira. That's a long run and not quite able to make the grab was Goddard. Yeah, that's a great point you make about Shelby Walters, too, who nearly got a gift that time. Would have been a tough grab for Goddard had she made the catch. But Walter, Walters had that no-hitter you mentioned, first in program history against North Carolina Central. Back on March 4th, and she was actually just one hit by pitch away from that being a perfect game. Two one to Pereira, goes back to the pitcher, and she'll make the play. Yeah, several of the top ACC ERA leaders are in this series. Shelby Walters, 0.45 ERA just ahead of Gila Rochard of Virginia Tech. Cagle, of course, we've seen her in this series, and also Peyton St. George. And here is Cagle, who once again, Duke has decided they do not want to pitch to. She'll take her second intentional walk of the game. <laughs> Dug out, making Kegel smile as she waits patiently. And so she'll take the open base. And, you know, you talk all about the the pitching and how it's really become a strength for this Duke program and you've got to give a lot of credit I would imagine to the head coach Marissa Young who herself was such a phenomenal pitcher when she played at Michigan three-time All-American was both the Big Ten pitcher of the year one season and player of the year another season graduated from that program number one all-time with 927 strikeouts number two with 88 wins And this is a really pivotal moment in this game, Jen, and I'm sure Marissa Young, who calls the pitches, is in charge of the, the pitching staff for Duke, is, is feeling it too. Runner in scoring position, you have your cleanup hitter up, you just intentionally walked Cagle to get to her, and you're just down by one run. Gambarda ropes it, and it is fair. The Clemson Tigers are in business. One comes across, they're looking for more. The throw home will not be in time, and Gumbarda makes him pay for looking at two base runners as she comes to the plate. It just feels so liberating to be somebody like Gumbarda who 
The opposing team walked the hitter in front of you to get to you two different times in this game, and you come through, you step up for your team and put them ahead with two outs and prove Duke wrong. Like, nope, you don't want to pitch to me. I'm going to get you. Yeah, Duke rolling the dice, I would say, as they put Kegel on in front of Gumbarda, who's one of the top run producers in this conference, and she showed you why right there. She struggled in this series, was just one for 10 before that at bat, but what a big one that was. And it's interesting too, Jen, because when you look at their overall numbers, they're almost identical, Kegel and Gumbarda each hitting about the same average, the same amount of home runs at 7, 23 versus 21 RBI. It's kind of like a pick your poison, although showing much respect to Valerie Cagle with those two intentional walks. Alia Logaleo up to bat and a pinch runner came on for Gambarda. That was Ariel Oda, number 24. really where that error is coming back to haunt Duke too. Error on Christina Foreman, the second baseman off the bat of Mackenzie Clark. Because think of second the two pitch. runs that have scored in this inning. It's been the error and then the intentional walk. You're going to give up hits. I mean, it, it's just going to happen. But what you don't want to happen is when you give those hits up, that there's been free passes on base ahead of them. O2 pitch to Ogaleo, strikes her out. So that will do it, but the Clemson Tigers getting some runs on the board before the strikeout to end the inning. John Rittman just saw his Clemson Tigers take the lead off of the big bat of Marissa Gambarda in his second season as Clemson's head coach, but a long time coaching softball, Stanford for 18 seasons, also some experience with the U.S. national team. And determined to build this program into a winner. They're off to a great start. I had to put in literally years of work <laughs> before getting to play his first game or coach his first game. Ariel Oda is going to go out to right field and replace Valerie Cagle, who's currently warming up in the bullpen. We've seen her pitch in all three games of the series. Christina Foreman to lead off the inning for Duke. She had that critical error in the last inning. See if she can make up with it with her bat. Foreman, a junior out of Tampa, Florida, leads this Duke team in home runs, RBI, and stolen bases. And one thing that I notice about all the Duke hitters, and talked about this yesterday with Christina Foreman actually at the plate, is they don't have a really big leg kick, a really big stride. Like, you're seeing a lot of, of different programs and in terms of how they approach their gather, their load. Look how quiet her stride is. Her left leg won't take a big step in terms of height and bring her knee up. See, Amanda, she was called out by her home plate umpire on that last pitch. Tim Casate explaining things. Yeah, it he's her. saying, it, and it did indeed hit her. I think he's saying that it, she leaned out over more of the strike zone to where if it wouldn't have hit her, it would have been a strike. If the ball hit her inside the batter's box, then that's different. That's a hit by pitch, and you don't have to actively move out of the way of the pitch. But because she was hanging out over the strike zone, and if she w wouldn't have hit her, it would have been a strike in the strike zone. So she is retired. Torres 
pops it into the air. Had enough spin on that ball to stay in the air long enough and make it tough for any fielder to make the play. Notre Dame and 13th ranked Florida State will start a big four game series at Joanne Graff Field Friday at 5 Eastern. You can watch ACC softball all season long right here on ACC Network and live on the ESPN app. Both of those programs coming off sweeps this weekend. Florida State swept Boston College. Notre Dame took three from NC State, had the final game of that series canceled due to weather today. Tapia gets it through the hole. Duke in business once again. Runners on first and second. Tapia hits early in the count, goes down, stays in her legs, and is able to drive this ball toward the right side. Duke back in business now with two runners on and less than two outs. Back-to-back -back singles for the Blue Devils. Testing Thompson and bringing up the captain, Rachel Crabtree. Just going to have a word first. Both teams taking a moment to discuss how they want to handle this situation. Josh Bloomer, assistant coach, talking to his team, trying to make some most of some runners in scoring position. The Blue Devils won the first two games of the series despite not really capitalizing on a lot of those opportunities. You can see the numbers that was coming into today. And they're one of five, one for five, excuse me, today with runners in scoring position, but have another opportunity here for Crabtree. And you think about that one hit was just that infield single off the bat of Deja Davis. So just looking for, you know, that big breakout hit, Jen. That that big hit that goes to the outfield that really makes some noise and shows Clemson that your offense isn't going to go away. Crabtree hits it deep. Catch is made. Runners will return. Thompson says a thank you out to our outfielders as no runner is able to advance. Kendall Lange came on to pinch run for Torres. She's at second. Cameron Jackson, the batter, in the eighth spot for Duke. One perhaps had a chance, but winds up bouncing foul. Remember, it was the bottom of the order that wound up getting things going in the third inning. It was Sarah Goddard in the nine spot who led off the third with a double, eventually came around to score Duke's only run. So perhaps Jackson looking to start the rally now for Duke with runners on first and second. Catchable, maybe? Nope. As a hitter in that situation, you see it off your bat. You see it go in the air, and you're like, oh, just go foul, go foul, or <laughs> get down, drop. Like, you truly hold your breath because you know you're down by a run. You know that there's a runner at second base that you could score. You want to be able to have that chance, and you want to be the one to bring her in. 0-2 pitch from Thompson, and this is outside. Thompson ready, and it's right back up the middle to the second baseman, Pereira. 
Nice play by the Clemson defense to end the threat and end the inning. Seven Innings is the weekly softball podcast with the ESPN personalities covering the sport you love. They entertain us all the way to Oklahoma City and beyond. Amanda's a part of this, of course, along with Michelle, Jenny, Kayla, and Jen. I'll break down RPI and lots of other things. What else are you guys talking about on the podcast, Amanda? Definitely talked a little bit about some mid-majors teams, and we each picked a different player from a mid-major program and gave them a little bit of love. But I think the biggest surprise was seeing the RPI come out this this past week and just seeing exactly where everybody shook out. And definitely some surprises. The ACC had a really good showing within the top 10 and within the top 25, too. Duke being the highest, or excuse me, Florida State being the highest at six. Duke was nine. Yeah, big splash for the ACC in that first RPI release. Nancy Gilstrap, the batter, to start the inning for the Clemson Tigers. She was also the leadoff hitter in the second inning, started that inning off with a single. Gilstrap wants another, and she's going to get it. Find some green grass in the middle of the Duke. Blue Devil Outfielders. It's jammed a little bit, but it's got to find some grass there in between center field. And Gilstrap and Clemson have done a good job of being able to get their leadoff hitter on base within this series. Dominique Salinas, a change for Duke out in left field. The transfer from Ole Miss, grad transfer, taking over for Goddard. It was a big part of Duke scoring their run in the third inning. She doubled and came around to score. First pitch, a ball for Matamore. Working that inside corner. Yeah, she is. And she's getting a little bit off the plate, too. Having a call that was able to go her way to make it a 1-1 count. It's been such a, a tight series. You know, we've had so many close games, 2-0, 3-1, and then 4-1, all within two or three runs of each other. Straight called. Walters, as we told you before, coming into this game, the ACC leader with a minuscule .45 ERA. And Clemson does have two runs on the board today, but both of those unearned coming after Christina Foreman error in the third. You know, this is a, a Duke team. They haven't lost a lot in the last couple of seasons. And it's because of their pitching staff and how strong that they've been in the circle. Of course, Shelby Walters with a .45 ERA. Peyton St. George as well. You know, she got the loss yesterday. I read this nugget on her. Peyton St. George, that was her first loss since February 28, 2020. That was also the last time that she gave up four earned, ru earned runs, which is what she did yesterday in her outing against Clemson. But in the last two seasons, Jen, this Duke team, 49-6, and six, only lost six times in... Before yesterday, the last two seasons, they were 5-0 and against ranked opponents. Yeah, those are some impressive numbers. Had that 20-game win streak snapped yesterday by the Clemson Tigers. Matamore makes some good contact. And Clemson getting the crowd, who's not quite as full as we were used to seeing last year when this place ranked amongst the tops in the nation in terms of average attendance because they have to socially distance, but still the fans who are able to be there enjoying what they're seeing right now from the Clemson Tigers. 
Wait, you know, they had worked her inside within that at bat and then decided to go away. I would have continued to work her on the inner half. Didn't look it on that pitch. Kind of gave her one out and over the plate, and she's able to drive it back over the middle or back up the middle. Nice hit by Grace Mattimore. And, Jen, you can tell Clemson has this energy. They have this pumped upness. I know that's not a real <laughs> word, but about themselves where they want to be able to win this game. I'll allow the pumped upness. I, I, I feel it. And you know what? It works with this pinch hitter, too, because her name is Morgan Johnson. She's a 6'1 freshman. See, she's got some great height. Her nickname is Mojo. So when you're getting pumped up, you got to have your Mojo Johnson on <laughs> to pinch hit here for Hyatt. Wow, what a cool nickname. All based off of so your good. real name. That's awesome. <laughs> Jaden Cheek into pinch run for Matamore at first. Johnson swinging early. Runners trying to move, and she will do her job. Advance the runners as she's retired. One pitch, that's all Mojo needed. Runners on second and third, and Casey Bigham, the batter for Clemson. Bigham batting in the nine spot in the order, so this bit of a rally that the Tigers have going. If Bigham can manage to keep it going, she'd turn it over to the red hot Mackenzie Clark at the top of the order. And this is where Shelby Walters really needs to bear down. You're down by a run, two runners in scoring position. She has really good down movement. So oftentimes she feeds her infield a lot of ground ball outs. And now you're going to try to work Bigham inside and hopefully get a ground ball to the left side of the infield. Usually a ground ball to the right side, especially to second base. Oftentimes it's a great way to score a run. So try to get her to pull the ball to the left side. Bigham did ground out to shortstop in her first at bat in the last inning. First year with the Clemson Tigers, transferred in the fall of 2020, was a two-time first team all SOCON performer at Furman. Popped up, Torres going after it, and makes the catch for out number two. Just best case scenario right there for Duke's defense. Either a strikeout would be your number one option in this situation because then nobody has to touch the ball to potentially make an error or just an easy pop fly out like that. I mean, that's exactly what you wanted if you're Duke's defense. Easy out. Mackenzie Clark has been anything but an easy out for Clemson, especially in the last couple games of this series. She singled in the first. She had a ball hit on the ground to Foreman in the third. That was bobbled by the second baseman, so she reached and was able to come around and score. Let's see how Walters and the Blue Devils handle Clark this time around. Big smile as Clark sees exactly how Duke plans to handle her, Amanda. Yeah, Duke hasn't been scared to use that intentional walk, huh? It's the no. third intentional walk that we've seen in this series. Even with the last one, perhaps you might say, coming back <laughs> to bite them a little bit, as in the third, they intentionally walked Valerie Cagle for the second time in this game. That put two runners on for Marissa Gambarda, who promptly had a two-run double and put the Tigers in the lead. Well, now the bases are going to be loaded for the first time in this game. And I'll bring up Cami Pereira, who has struggled. She is hitless in the series, 0 for 10 so far. Yeah, you're going from arguably the hottest hitter on the team to maybe the, the coolest yet to get a hit in the series, Cami Pereira. 
See how the senior handles it. Two eighty three hitter on the season. Number dipping down a little bit with her zero for two performance so far today. And yeah, Coach Young is going to wait a minute. Yeah, I got to talk about this one, right? Maybe make your pitcher smile. Maybe talk about, hey, this is what you've done against her, and I just want to remind you, you have dominated her. So feel good about throwing your best pitches against her, and let's go at her. Let's get this out and trust your defense to make a play behind you. Ground ball to the infield, out at any bag. Plenty of action there in the Duke bullpen, as you can see as well. Peyton St. George, big smile on her face, along with Lily Walker, a freshman pitcher for the Blue Devils. Pereira looking for her first hit, not gonna get it. Nice play made by Tapia at short to end the inning with no further damage done. The beauty of having the bases loaded in this situation after the intentional walk because you have a force at any bag to be able to get an out like that. Another tight game in this series finale of this top 25 matchup between 12th ranked Duke and 21st ranked Clemson. The Tigers getting two runs in the bottom of the third after Duke scored in the top of that inning to take the lead. Didn't last long, and it's a one-run game with two innings left to play from McWhorter Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Jen Hildreth, Amanda Scarborough, All-American pitcher from Texas A&M, enjoying this one so far. And I'm not going to lie, Amanda, I really like to watch Millie Thompson. She just has that fiery <laughs> attitude. Like, I want her on my team no matter what sport I'm playing because she's just that intense. Yeah, it's fun to see how each pitcher has their own personality. This is her first time facing Salinas, who came into the game, and first pitch is fouled off. Dominique Salinas. Lefty now into the lineup. She came on to replace Goddard out in left field for the Blue Devils. Definitely fooled here there a bit with that pitch. That was uh, another version of nasty change up. <laughs> totally got her looking for something harder. Now you're speaking my language. 0-2. Oh, <laughs> Thompson off to a good start. This is the nine-hole hitter for Duke. Salinas. Didn't go chasing after that offering. You know that she feels comfortable, Millie Thompson, too, to, to have this type of presence in the circle and, and be the competitor that she is. I mean, she's a freshman, and she's still, you would never think it. You have to look down and double check. Like, is she really actually a freshman? <laughs> Ball up the middle, finds a gap, and so Salinas, despite getting in an 0-2 hole there, comes back, battles back, and has a leadoff single. Hey, no April fooling, because Thursday, a men's lacrosse matchup you don't want to miss on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Number one, North Carolina. Number two, Duke coverage starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. That brings up Jamison Cable at the top of the lineup for Duke. Cable has not been able to figure out Billy Thompson so far today. First time around, different story. She was two for three against Thompson in game two, one of the better performers for Duke against Thompson in that game. Tries to bunt. Does not get far enough. Now, there's definitely been times when Duke has had moments to be able to put down a bun, advance a runner, some situational hitting that they just haven't 
necessarily been able to execute in the past couple of games. And, you know, we were talking about the presence of Millie Thompson. I was reminded of a note here on my board of her middle name, which is Dare. I mean, if that does not fit, maybe that was a joke that really her middle name is. I don't know, but it works. Real or fake, I'm going with we're, it. We're going with it. Between that and Mojo, I mean, just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Feeling behind in the name category here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must have had a good nickname, though. What was your nickname when you were pitching? You want to know what it was? Just yeah. A. <laughs> well, A for A's. I can take that. That Amanda. works. <laughs> Amanda and Ace. It works yeah. in both instances. <laughs> Duke down a run, trying to make something happen in the fifth. Had a leadoff single from Dominique Salinas. It's a great take. Emily Thompson just continues to be around the strike zone, making these Duke hitters really into every single pitch. None of, every single pitch seems to be a competitive pitch with her. Oh, except for that one, trying to throw that change up a little bit more down the dirt with two strikes. It's not always going to happen, but great job by Hyatt back there to keep that one in front. That's a pitch that we've seen Duke run on, be able to take extra 60 feet, staying still on that one. Two two from Thompson, and Cable's got a hit. No play to be made. Runners on first and second. No outs for Duke. It's a nice at bat by Jamison Cavill, a pitch that is more over the middle of the plate, and Cavill really worked back into that count, took some close pitches, and being able to get a hit there off of Thompson. Now two on, nobody out. This will bring up Deja Davis in the designated player spot in the lineup today. Typically the leadoff hitter all season long for Duke up until yesterday when she moved down in the lineup. Now she's up in the two hole. Preseason all ACC selection had a single last at bat. What was one of the storylines coming in, Amanda? Runners in scoring position and Duke's inability to capitalize. The Blue Devils, three for 23 in the series, one for seven today. But Davis trying to change that. She bunts, she'll sprint to first, and she will be out, but the runners move over to second and third. It's great execution. We were just talking about it with Duke being able to be situational. Deja Davis lays down the bunt, and of course she always has a chance too with her speed to turn that sacrifice bunt into a hit. But Clemson plays it well and cleanly. Yeah, we saw Davis slide head first into first. <laughs> that earned her the single and also wound up scoring the run in the third. Now Caroline Jacobson, the batter for Duke, doubled in the first inning. Perhaps the best chance right here for Duke to retake the lead. They had one run in the top of the third. Clemson answered with two in the bottom of that inning. And a win today for Duke would give them the series win over the Tigers. Big bat, but foul. Smacked off the wall in foul territory. But Jacobson showing the power that we know she has. She is tied with Foreman for the team lead with five home runs on the season, 20 in her career, which is first all time in this young Duke program, just in its fourth year of existence. Yeah. 
0-2 pitch outside. And she's had some big home runs too, Caroline Jacobson. Just seems to have that ability to hit the long ball, to be the clutch hitter for Duke whenever the season. And they've needed somebody to step up the most. Jacobson puts it in the air. Runners ready to tag, and they are. They're on the move. No plays. The throw is off the mark. One run has scored, and the game is tied. That'll work. Good execution by Duke within this inning to be able to get her on, get her over, and then get her in with a sacrifice fly. Jacobson doing her job, a fly ball deep enough to the outfield to for sure score, but nobody was covering third base. And lucky for Clemson, that ball didn't get away too far, or else Duke would have been aggressive and tried to score the go-ahead run. Christina Foreman, the batter. The runner on third, two outs. Foreman, in the words of Marissa Young, her head coach, the firecracker in this lineup. Nothing doing so far today. This one again popped in the air to left. Logaleo is underneath it, but the Duke Blue Devils even things up as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Clemson Tigers in the third were able to get a couple of runs off an error. That error by Foreman and then the bat of Gumbarda made the Blue Devils pay. Duke had scored first in the top of that inning. Clemson responded with two runs and then Duke able to tie it up in the top half of this inning. Now we'll see the response from the Tigers. Yeah, it's all about that response, Jen. And I'd actually, you know, I'm glad that you pointed that out, that Clemson did score those two runs in the bottom of the third after Duke had put up one run in the top of the third. It's always about that response factor within each of these games. Valerie Cagle, are they going to pitch to her this time around? She's been intentionally walked in her first two plate appearances, but she leads off the inning this time. Perhaps I have a feeling the Duke will t take their chances. Yeah. <laughs> well, or, and being really careful. You know, the, the two yeah. pitches that she's seen to get her to 2 0 have been well out of the strike zone. And that's oftentimes how teams have been pitching her this season, understanding what she was capable of, seeing the type of first freshman year that she had last year at the plate. Oh, and then comes more into the zone. I, it's been tricky to see how Duke is going to pitch her. <laughs> Remember, one of the intentional walks, they threw her a first pitch strike. She swung at it, and then they went ahead and put her on first base with an intentional walk. So it's definitely been a little mind game here. <laughs> Two, one. Oh. I don't know where that pitch was. That was a really good pitch and ooh, potentially a good eye by Cagle. <laughs> uh did not miss by much. 3-1 count. Taking no chances, though, in the dirt. And so Cagle aboard with the walk. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern right here on ACC Network, we'll have exclusive coverage of the Miami Pro Day from Coral Gables. The Huddle's Jordan Cornette will host along with Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and former Canes head coach Mark Rick. So slightly different in the way that Duke worked it, but three walks in one way or another for Cagle in the game. And pinch runner in for her at first is Carly Shannon. Shannon has scored two runs in this series already as a pinch runner. Came on and scored both in game two and game three. Here's one of the heroes so far, Marissa Gumbarda, whose bat had been quiet until her RBI double in the third. And Shannon, who just came into pinch run too, Jen, has stolen three bases in this series, three for three. Potentially look for her 
to pick a pitch to run on within this at bat. Gambarda on the ground and in the hole. And Clemson, just as they did in the last inning, started off with two base runners to lead off the inning. And Gambardi gets a pitch on the inner half and just is able to muscle it out into the outfield. Just finds that 5-6 hole and able to drill it through. Alia Logaleo, the batter. 0 for 2 so far today with a strikeout in her last at bat. Now runners in scoring position for the Tigers. They have not capitalized in that category either today. Just 1 for 8. One zero from Walters, big swing, but foul from Logaleo. Yeah, she hits a lot of foul balls over there on that left side, so it just tells you if you're a pitcher, you have to work her when you go in hard in. Definitely more of a pull hitter, even a couple of pitches on the outside corner she's been able to get for hits that where she doesn't go with the pitch, she kind of pulls it, so you kind of read her swing and know, okay, if I go in, I have to go hard in on her hands. And if I go out, it's going to be clipping the corner. Legaleo tries to bunt. It did hit her on the way down. Yeah, it ends up fouling off of her and into her leg. And it hits her in the box, so that just goes down as a foul ball. Logaleo has reached safely in every game of the series so far except for today. You know, we haven't had hardly any one, two, three innings in this series, at least for the two games yesterday and today that we've called. Just has been a lot of traffic on the base pass, whether it's from an error or a free pass or an intentional walk or a hit. This continual traffic that these pitchers are having to pitch with on base. One, two. And again, fouled off. Just spoiled that. Walters threw a really good pitch, and Logaleo was way out in front, barely getting a piece of it off the end of her bat. She's been a hard out. She really has been a really tough out, especially Jen now that she's healthy, being able to just get back into her groove and, and see the ball well, get back into rhythm. Yeah, Logaleo was out rehabbing an injury at the start of the season and appeared in the lineup for the first time in the series at Virginia, which occurred back at the beginning of this month, March 5th through 7th. Clemson taking on the Cavaliers. Two, two, swing and a miss. Not many strikeouts today for Walters. In fact, just her second, but what a big one it was. Yeah, change up on the inside corner, just dives down. Such a good location. It was the pitch before that set up that one. Remember that curveball that went well off the plate, kind of got Logaleo leaving, leaning. Ends up getting her with that off speed pitch. It was a great pitch. Nancy Gilstrap having a great day at the plate so far. A couple of singles, and she's hit. So Clemson really threatening now with the bases loaded. Now these past two games, Clemson has just really made the pitching staff for Duke work, whether it's just taking a hit by pitch or taking them deep into counts and really lowering their strikeouts too. the first three games they had struck out 18 times 
only two times today. So a bases loaded situation with one out in the bottom of the fifth. We saw some pitchers warming up for Duke in the bullpen. Will Marissa Young be making a change? Making her way out to talk to her pitcher. And it looks like we will indeed have a pitching change. Peyton St. George will be making her way to the circle. Shelby Walters, day is done. We'll introduce you to St. George after the break. Pitching change for the Duke Blue Devils. Amanda, tell us about Peyton St. George and what the Tigers are going to see. Yeah, well, we've seen her a lot in this series. It's going to be her third appearance in the series. She's going to be thrown in the mid-60s, 66, 67 miles an hour and give a much different look than what we saw to Shelby Walters as she'll be more up in the zone than what Walters was with her drop ball. Look for her to spin the ball up side to side and be able to work her rise ball. St. George with an 11-1 record on the season, picked up her first loss, as you referenced earlier. Yesterday in Game 3, gave up four earned runs in that loss to the Tigers. She also has a win in this series, and that tied the single-season program record with her 11th win of the season, had a complete game shutout in Game 1. Bases loaded, one out, and Grace Matamore, the batter for the Clemson Tigers. Trying to bunt, everybody on the move. The play at the plate. They got the ball there in time. But the umpire immediately pointing down after. Looked yeah, like the ball got there, but then the umpire initially called it out, and then watch what happens afterward. Well, kind of a subdued <laughs> call, too, I think, because you forget that was a squeeze play, and the bases are loaded. So all Torres had to do was just touch on home. She did go down <laughs> did. for the tag, so I think it made it look a little bit more dramatic than it actually was. But nonetheless, an out as Clemson calls the squeeze with the bases loaded, and Duke plays it well on D. So now two down. First pitch is a hit. And the Clemson Tigers have retaken the lead. They may add a little more as that throw got away. Squeeze play didn't work, no problem. Next pitch, making a difference is Hyatt. Yeah, and that pitch is well off the plate, but she was clearly looking for the inner half against Peyton St. George, and that ball gets away from Torres to where Gilstrap is going to be able to see it down and away and not just score one run, but pull ahead by two. Good piece of hitting by JoJo Hyatt to hit early in the count, stick with her approach, be able to drive that ball up the middle of the field to put Clemson on top. JoJo Hyatt was pinch hit for her last time through the lineup. This time she hits for herself, takes the first pitch, and gets a hit. Bringing two more runs across on the play. In the Nine spot is Casey Bigham, but a pinch hitter coming to the plate. That'll be Sarah Howell, freshman out of Oxford, Alabama. When you think about Jen, how fast all of that happened, right? Peyton St. George comes in. They immediately squeeze off of her. It's a bing bang play. <laughs> Next pitch, she comes up. JoJo Hyatt does and hits it back up the middle of the field and then there's a throw home, and then it bounces away, and it just seems like the game starts to get a little bit out of hand with how fast Clemson's putting pressure on Duke. Catch made, and that will do it, but Clemson has retaken the lead. They're up 4-2. 
Yeah, celebrating Women's History Month until the end of the month. You can even find different clips of oh, just like that on our Seven Innings podcast Twitter. Deja Davis had one. Christina Foreman, one was put up today of her as well. She participated, and also our Seven Innings podcast crew will have one. Kelly Torres, the batter, to lead off this inning for Duke. So twice now in this game, Amanda, the Duke Blue Devils have taken the lead in the top of the inning. They scored one in the top of the third. Clemson came back, had two in the bottom of the inning. Same thing just happened in the fifth as the Clemson Tigers went back out in front. But Torres hits it hard, but it is caught out in right. Cagle has returned in right field where she started the game. It's kind of like the trifecta there. You had an outfield assist. You had the win and the circle, the go-ahead home run at the plate. I mean, somebody that can just do it all is Valerie Cagle. Tapia, the batter, got it up over the glove of Gilstrap. It's bobbled just a little bit by Clark out in center field, but no harm done. So a single from Tapia trying to get things moving again for this Duke offense. Yeah, second hit of the day for Tapia. Shooting that ball towards the left side. She's done well whenever she's hit early in the count. Also had that walk back in the second inning, and she's seeing the ball well. Yeah, reached in all three plate appearances today, and that will bring up Rachel Crabtree. Hit in the air, her first two at-bats. Popped a shortstop and then a little deeper to center field next time up. Fouls it off. Critical moment here for Duke trying to stay with the Clemson Tigers. Duke could get a series win if they can come back and get the win today. Clemson Tigers, I think, would be pretty happy with a series split. It was already the highest ranked team that they have ever beaten in their young program's history when they beat 12th ranked Duke yesterday. They'd love to get another one. Yeah, remember, the series was supposed to go one game on Friday, two games on Saturday, and then one game on Sunday, but they ended up playing that doubleheader on Friday, and I think that that was to Clemson disadvantage because they just seemed, I don't know, a little bit maybe nervous. They made those errors on defense. Valerie Cagle pitched well, and she has in every one of her appearances so far, but just a little bit on their heels that first day, and they ended up having to play two games instead of just one. That game moved due to some projected inclement weather in the area, potentially yesterday in Clemson. Had some nasty rain earlier today as well, but that moved out of the way in time. Just a little overcast for this game. Full count now for Crabtree. Three two pitch, swung on and caught out in right field. Cagle busy once again. More softball coming your way on Friday. Notre Dame and 13th ranked Florida State. This will be a big four game series at Joanne Graff Field. You can watch ACC softball both Friday and all season long right here on ACC Network and live on the ESPN app. Florida State winning four against Boston College this weekend. Outscored them 22 to five. Hit the ball well. Cameron Jackson, the batter now for Duke with two outs. Duke, the top team in the ACC at the moment. Florida State had had a series canceled against North Carolina in COVID protocol, so the Seminoles haven't had a chance to play too many games. But at the moment, Duke the top team trying to stay there. And the Clemson Tigers with a two-run lead here late. Got some tough games coming up, all against 
potential teams that could are potential contenders to win the ACC in Florida State, Virginia Tech. And also will have to play UNC too, who's more at the top of the standings in the ACC. Some deep breaths from the freshman, Millie Thompson. Trying to see this one through. Jackson, deep to left, just at the warning track. What a catch made by Logaleo. That will end the inning. Clemson still up two. The bottom of the fifth inning, JoJo Hyatt came up, swung at the first pitch of her at bat, a pitch that was off the plate inside, but still able to get a hit to center field to be able to push across the go-ahead run for Clemson. They'd actually score two because the ball would get away from the catcher. That's exactly where we're at right now with Clemson with four and Duke with two. Clemson Tigers have clawed their way back both times Duke has scored in the top of the inning. And Peyton St. George came in and immediately was under fire from that Clemson attack. She came on in the last inning with one out. And runners on base, and now it's the top of the order. And Mackenzie Clark. Clark singled in her first at bat today, then reached on an error, then was intentionally walked. Now she'll face Peyton St. George for the first time today, though of course she has definitely seen her several times already this series. Tigers have done a good job today, Amanda, of getting their leadoff hitter on. Done it four or five times. Yeah, when you do that, it just really starts to put you into control offensively in the inning. Already put pressure on the defense, put pressure on the pitcher. Again, there haven't been any one, two, three innings in this game. There was the one wherever there was a double play back in the bottom of the second inning, but I mean, like, nobody gets on <laughs> one, two, three innings nice and easy. We haven't had that here. <laughs> no, nothing coming easy. These two teams have been tight since the first game. 2-1 win for Duke in game one Friday. 3-1 win for Duke in game two. And then Clemson a 4-1 winner yesterday. And this is a, a highly anticipated series, Gen 2, with Duke being ranked 12, Clemson being ranked 21. They're the new kids on the block, the first series that they were playing against each other in ACC Conference. The way it's gone, you'd think it almost would be fitting for it to be a split series, because as you mentioned, <laughs> yeah. it's... You know, they're the two youngest programs in the ACC, just the second year of existence for Clemson, the fourth for Duke. They're ranked in the top 25. They came into the series, the top two teams in the ACC standings. Duke still is sitting there. As Clemson's dropped down a little bit, this could be catchable. Couple players there. Good communication, though. And Crabtree makes the catch for out number one. Well, and coming into the series, they were both on win streaks. They're the both... Uh, of the new teams and their stats were so alike too with batting average I mean slugging percentage uh, stolen bases as well on top of this ERA I mean look how similar both of these teams were coming in and it's been a pretty evenly matched type series too each team's too can mean errors at different times that have come back to haunt them yeah Cami Pereira, the batter. The errors really bit Clemson in that first game. Two errors in the fifth inning wound up putting Duke in the lead where the Blue Devils would stay in that 2 nothing win. And then an error earlier today in the third inning helped lead to two Clemson runs. Pereira 
Looking for her first hit. Not going to get it here as it's caught by Salinas. Perhaps, Amanda, we could see one, two, three. Don't know, though, because look who's <laughs> up. You just did the announcer's jinx, I think, on the one, two, three inning. There is no such thing, but, I mean, if it happens, I'm blaming you. <laughs> I think also Valerie Keiko could have something to do with that because Duke has not wanted to mess with her two intentional walks and then a third walk, the non-intentional variety. This time she had a pitch to hit, and she did it. Bounces off the wall and left, and Cagle still on the move. She'll stand up at third. I take zero credit for that and put it all <laughs> on the bat of Valerie Cagle. Yeah, I would too. Why not? I mean, she's such a great hitter for this Clemson team and within the ACC and as well nationally. Hits the first pitch that she sees. She's like, you know what? I'm not even going to give you a chance to walk me. Salinas dives towards the line and lets it get past her. That's just a, a bit of a mistake on the left fielder's part because the ball got past her. Cagle all, able to get all the way over to third base. And potentially Clemson could score another insurance run now in this inning. Love these facial expressions, but your guess as good as mine is what exactly they're talking about over there. So Kegel on third and Marissa Gumbarda, who has a hit in her last two at bats, that big double in the third that scored a couple of runs and then a single in the fifth. Did she go? No, she did not. Throws her a first pitch changeup, gets her out on her front foot, and I think that should have been called a strike. Oh, it was. Sorry. It actually was. <laughs> I know. I, I was with you. I was trying to check that as well. Thought initially the call was ball, but they agreed with you, Amanda. So fun to call games remotely for the little nuances <laughs> like that. <laughs> Very appreciative for it, but always a challenge. Yes. <laughs> we ask for your grace and patience as we do our best to get you the information. <laughs> This part of the lineup, so dangerous, though, for Clemson. When you think about Cagle and Gambarda, neither of whom at the plate have really had that great of a series, to be honest. But the potential of what these two could do, and they've shown it a little today, particularly Gambarda. Yeah, three for four in the lineup. Cagle and Gambarda are three for four on the day with three walks, of course, to Cagle. So right here in the middle of the order, been able to produce, been able to get on base. They want to make things happen. Peyton St. George, 98 strikeouts in her career. Or excuse me, that's this year. <laughs> and it's a single season <laughs> record. I mean, not shorter at all because she gets that just about every year. So certainly has that strikeout potential, but can she sit down Gambarda? Full count. Gambarda. And this should be caught by Cable in center and is last chance coming up for the Duke Blue Devils. Top of the seventh on the way from Clemson. Last chance for the Duke Blue Devils to try to extend this game. They trail Clemson by two and now they're going to face Clemson's ace as Valerie Cagle taking over in the circle after a job well done by the freshman Millie Thompson. Yeah, we've seen Cagle in all three of the games, one and two record, just kind of been the tough luck loser. Only given up three earned runs, but has two losses in this series. Pitched 16 innings and 228 total pitches so far against Duke. Definitely thrown a bunch, and they've gotten a lot of looks off of her. But throw harder, 70 miles an hour, throw lower in the zone. Good fastball with down movement. Also be able to mix speeds with an off-speed rise and change up. 
the batters coming up for Dukes as this will be Dominique Salinas who did not start the game but came on for Goddard and singled in her first at bat in the fifth also came around to score. Big pitch, big swing, and miss from Salinas. Good movement away from her. Definitely not a strike. Got her chasing a bit there. Got it again. Nice looking pitch. One, two, the count. the first appearance of this series for Dominique Salinas when she entered this game a couple innings ago. They're trying to make an impact here for Duke. Yeah, it's tough to have just your first at bat <laughs> coming off of someone when the rest of your teammates who are in the starting lineup have 11... <laughs> 12 off of her. Yeah, they've all seen Kegel. Salinas hasn't. A couple of good eyes there after chasing, making Kegel work. This is exactly what Duke needs is a Salinas plate appearance and just for her to find a way to get on for the top of the order. Full count. Just to up the drama meter a little bit more here in the seventh. Inside pitch, walked her. Great at bat by Salinas, who just looked like she was behind everything that Kegel threw whenever she swung at it. And Kegel let her get back into the count and ended up walking her. Top of the lineup coming up now for Duke. This will be Jamison Cable, who singled in her last at bat and has been one of the best hitters all series long for the Blue Devils. Representing the time run, now with Salinas on first. I think Duke is putting themselves in a really good situation right here, Jen. Cable coming up, Davis, Jacobson, all have seen the ball well in this series. Upperclassman, too, for Duke. Excuse me there, Amanda. Morrison to pinch run for Salinas at first. There's a strike from Cagle. Cable fouling it off. Everybody up in the dugout. Clemson trying to hang on at home, get the series split. Duke seeing if they can mount a comeback. One-two pitch got away from Cagle. The throw over to first, not in time as Morris returns. It's a good reach by Jojo Hyatt back behind the plate to be able to just quickly react to that pitch and save a wild pitch. I have to think, Jen, too, like this, this series would have been packed if attendance would have been able to have 100% capacity versus, what, about three to 400 people that are being allowed inside. It would have been just such a great atmosphere. Well, these two teams have battled it out. They're going to say no swing. So this at bat continues, and another full count. Second of two batters in this inning. Kegel walked the first.
Cable got her bat on the ball, and the runner will advance to second as she is retired. So Morris on second, one down, Deja Davis, one of the captains for this Duke Blue Devil team, the batter. sure I give you the correct number because this has been something we've been following since we came into this game today Amanda you said watch out for how Duke handles the situations with runners in scoring position because they have left a lot out there they are three for 34 in the series one for eight today but have a chance to make a difference here yeah and the one hit that they had today was simply a ground ball to first base that Deja Davis was able to leg out for an infield single Just a timely hitting has, has been missing for them lately. Davis diving head first to earn that single in the third. Those are the numbers that Davis is trying very much to keep out of her mind, and I'm sure she is focused on this at bat, the junior out of Cerritos, California. Preseason all ACC pick for the Blue Devils. Two pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number two, but they're going to have to earn it. And there is the official strikeout recorded. So one chance remaining for Duke. Valerie Cagle trying to close this out. Gets her on that off speed pitch. Guessing. Just continuing to change speeds like we've seen Cagle do this entire weekend. Caroline Jacobson, now the batter. The junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. One for two today. You get to this 3-4 spot in the lineup. You expect some power for Duke. Jacobson and Foreman can bring that. Foreman on deck if Jacobson can pass her the ball, pass her the bat and get her up to bat. Both of those two with five home runs on the season to lead the Blue Devils. One, one. In for a strike. Just paints the outside corner here. Over the top spin, fastball outside. Aya does a nice job to help her out too. Duke Blue Devils had 20 straight wins before yesterday's loss to Clemson. They had only one loss on the season before the Tigers beat them yesterday. Clemson trying to make it back to back. This ball could finish it for the Tigers. Gilstrap, did she get it there in time? Yes, she did, and the Clemson Tigers get the win and the series split. Some frustration, and I think you understand it for Jacobson, Amanda, because that was close. 
so close at first base. What hustle by Jacobson, understanding that the game is on the line, the series win is on the line. A bang bang play at first base. They got the call right, but what a comeback and a bounce back by Clemson to lose those two games on Friday, not look great defensively, not look real sharp at the plate. And these last two games and their wins, be able to put some hits together, be able to play clean defense, and to be able to rely on their leader in the circle, Valerie Cagle, as well as Millie Thompson, throwing a great game. Yeah, Millie Thompson getting the start today and then just handing the ball over to Valerie Cagle to finish things off, but Thompson working well to start this game. And Millie Thompson had a nice day in the circle, being able to change speeds, being able to rely on her defense. Deja Davis had an infield single that would be able to score Duke and Sarah Goddard. Yeah, that was the third where Duke had a run, but then Clemson answered with two in the bottom of that inning. And then, of course, JoJo Hyatt, when Peyton St. George came in, hit the first pitch of her at bat, being able to push across one run with an RBI, and then a Duke error would have another run come across. But JoJo Hyatt with a game-winning RBI for Clemson today. As you've said a couple times, it was an action-packed game, an action-packed series, especially in these last two that you and I got to call, Amanda, with a lot of base runners and... Both teams not really making life easy on two great pitching staffs that came in. Tops in the ACC, one and two in ERA, Clemson and Duke in that category. Yeah, it was a really even series and a hard fought series at that. A lot of close games. Well, we're now joined by Clemson head coach, John Rittman. Coach, congratulations. What a fight from your team, really, to get this series split. What does this mean to your program? Oh, it means a lot. Um, you know, we, like you said, Jen, we got a lot of fight in this program. Um, we're a young program, but, uh, you know, they just come out and they play the game. They, they're they playing with nothing to lose. Um, you know, tough day on uh, Friday to lose a doubleheader, both close games. And, like you said, they just came back and, and fought and won two close games against a very good Duke team. Coach, what do you think it was about the way that you played on Friday versus Saturday and Sunday? What did you guys see as a coaching staff that allowed you to come back and win those two games specifically? Well, Friday, you know, we've never seen their pitching, really. Um, last year, we faced them early in the season. They pitched Butler, and so we had no idea about St. George and, and Walters and until you see them live. I mean, we've obviously watched video, but, you know, they're two very good pitchers, and, uh, you know, I, I felt like we were a little timid at the plate, and, and uh, you know, they just beat us. Their pitchers beat our hitters on Friday, and then we didn't play sharp defense, and, I just told our team we, we still had chances to win both of those games. If we clean up our defense and compete at the plate and, and get some good pitching, you know, that's what this game's all about. We'll, we'll find a way to get the timely hit. We've proven that this season, and I think we did that yesterday and today. You know, we cleaned up the defense. Our pitching was phenomenal, and we got the timely hits. Well, Coach, you mentioned your pitching. I don't know that there could be two – more different personalities in the circle than what you had and what we saw today with Millie Thompson and Valerie Cagle just stone-faced to close it out. But can you talk a little bit about those two, both the personalities that they bring in the circle and the way that they pitch to help this team? Oh, we don't have a, a lot of time to talk about their personalities because <laughs> we could write a book. They're, they're both <laughs> definitely different. Um, Valerie is just, uh, you know, she's a phenomenal. I mean, think about what she did today. She, she hit. She had an assist in right field, gun to run her out at third, and then she comes in and saves the game. I mean, she is a five-tool player. I told you guys that the <laughs> other day. She's a phenomenal athlete. I'm just blessed to have her in our program, and, and she's learning how to lead. You know, she's maturing. And then Millie's just a competitor. My God, I mean, that kid just goes out there and gives it her all and competes her butt off every day. Well, we saw that, all of that, as you said today. Congrats on the win. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Coach. What a great series from both of these programs, as we expected. A top 25 matchup. Two teams that came in with winning streaks. Maybe the Lucky Turtle helped out the Clemson Tigers <laughs> as Duke won the first two of the series. Clemson won the second two. Their two highest-ranked wins in program history as they even this out. Two wins apiece for the Tigers and the Blue Devils.
For Amanda Scarborough, I'm Jen Hildreth. We've enjoyed it. You've been watching ACC Softball on the ACC Network. The Clemson Tigers winners today 4-2 at home.